sadhana practice, spiritual practice. <clears throat> it's natural. It's what we're accustomed to. All beings at some level, they're practicing for something to improve, to get better, to get closer. So practice feels entirely natural for us. If you have some um, aspiration, then you must practice to approach that, to get closer to this. You see. Also in spirituality, so many thousands, millions of people are practicing. So I always begin by asking them, what are you trying to get to? What is your goal? What are you trying to reach? And many times the common uh, answers are, I'm trying to get to God, or I'm trying to get to my to the pure being, I'm trying to realize myself, you see, like this. So I said, but where is yourself? If you're not yourself now, where, who are you? They said, yes, we know, I know that I am myself, but I don't feel that I am the self like I could be. Mahadevaya Namaha Sriman Mahadevaya Namaha You want to make use of the practice, but you don't want to depend upon the practice. Is that kind of yeah, how it is? But I have no <clears throat> doubt that the practice itself just, it does help me to slow down and be more in touch. Practice is okay. I use an example like, for instance, if a child, young child, <coughs> one year old or something, they just start to get used to walking, okay, and maybe they fall down, they fall down, and then they use a, a chair to, to get up, and once they're up on their feet again, they let go of the chair, and then they walk again. Practice is like holding on to this chair, making use of this support, get back your balance and move on. But as you get more mature, more skilled at working with the body you won't need to have anything to get up you see what is the purpose of the sadhana can it just be a purpose in itself just to practice every day because you like the practice some people fall in love with the sadhana and they keep this they do this all the time they do it you see but they never really reflect deeply about it why am i doing this sadhana for for what purpose and who am i who is doing the practice even Perhaps you don't even ask this question. For me, this is a very important question. If you're practicing for something, it means that it's not with you already. It means that you're in a process, a developmental process. You're developing something to get better at something, you see. And this is fine, you know. But I want to know what is the goal of your sadhana, of your practice. What is the goal? What is your goal? something to do for the rest of your life what is it must be some something if we are merely practicing something but you've never considered why you're practicing it I call it a kind of blind religion <coughs> sometimes we're doing this with all of life in every area of life we find ourselves thinking a certain way, acting a certain way, but we've never considered it. Why? I'm doing this thing, I'm studying very hard, but why? I'm working so hard, I'm working every day hard, but for what purpose? And I'm finding, I'm surprised at the result that sometimes people don't know why they're doing it. I think like I'm doing to, to become so familiar with a new habit and so I can drop the habits that is not serving me anymore. Uh. You know, because I think I can see that part of me, it's beyond all the habits, but I can see that the habits do operate in my life quite uh, strongly, yes. some habits. Yes. And uh, with sadhana, it's, it breaks the uh, habits in a way, so it makes it easier to just let things go, you know. But this letting go of things it can be a lot more natural. Somebody, for instance, is walking with a limp. They walk with a limp, okay? And they can spend a long time practicing to not walk with a limp, okay? Just to walk and be, to appear to, to not have a limp. <clears throat> but another one may have a limp and just say, you know, it's not important actually. 
this limp is just something that's taking place in my body. It's my, my being is not limping. And so they don't have to spend time trying to correct a limp. In the same way, sometimes we have our life that seems to be needing to, to be retrained and to be reguided. We learned this from our parents, from our ancestors, from our peers, you know, how to, you know, you have to work at yourself, you see, but you have said already, but I see that there is a place within me that sees <clears throat> that uh, good habits or bad habits, and I'm beyond this thing, yet they continue to function. I think it's okay for them to continue to function. I tell you, if you are not invested in the functioning, if you're not watching and being involved in the functioning, the functioning will become dysfunctional. It's not even affecting you. Maybe other people might speak about it to you, but rarely, because if it's not registering in your mind that you are being dysfunctional or that something is not behaving properly, it's out of your registration. You're not, your, your beingness is not suffering this, you see. But when you begin to identify with that, you bring in another psychological quality that you don't need. And then you have to work to get rid of this quality. Stay in the original place as the observer of both extremes, <clears throat> of bad quality or of upgrading your quality to better quality. You can keep on doing this all your life, you see. But some just recognize that you can let your life unfold just the way it is unfolding. And that that is not the significant thing. What is important is that I remain true to what I am. I am not this body. This is not a curse against this body. This is a recognition, <coughs> an observation, that this body, the instrument through which I can taste experiencing, is important, but is not the, the evidence of my being. It's not the, the essence or the definition of what really I am. And something rests completely in that which is already itself. Where is the sadhana for the being? Sadhana is for the mind. If you identify yourself as body-mind, you will need some sadhana. Myself, I would also encourage some sadhana. If I see that you are strongly identified with, with the mind, so strongly, that it will not be easy to refer to you other than as this body-mind then I might, 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 might myself advise, you know, then practice this sadhana that feels good for you until you are able to go beyond this identification and you will see that you don't need any sadhana to be who you are. If I say this to some people now, it will not be useful for them because they could not accept this advice. They are too strongly identified with the wheel of progress and with themselves as a progressive being. And so it would be completely inappropriate to offer this type of advice. But for someone like yourself, who is able to see this, then I tell you, okay, sadhana, who is the, for whom is the sadhana? Who practices? Who is the practicer of sadhana, you see? Is it the beingness? Is it the body? Or is it the mind?